Tell me to stop coming. The great so, program. So I really appreciate it, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. So um, the the reason, how, the way this program started, or the, um, oh, first of all, I should introduce myself. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell, uh, where we had there were 67 of us. I do elder law, um, and everybody there does other things. So that the nice thing about this is that if there's a problem that I can't figure out, I can ask somebody else. And when they have elder law issues, they ask me. Um, we've been doing presentations down here in Martha's Vineyard for over six years because my paralegal, who is sitting in the back, uh, Brenda Costa, uh, is uh, from the vineyard. She's, she, she makes me come back because we, we go to her parents' house and she makes me call her and try to figure out whether I'm talking to her or her mother. They have exactly <laughs> the same voice, and I still can never figure it out. So anyway, that's one of the reasons why we're back. So um, one of the, the reason why this program happened was a couple years ago, I had done a series uh, in, in Tisbury, and it was called Planning to Stay Home. And it was all about, all, because everybody, the goal of the exercises, I've often said for most of my clients, is everybody wants to die and be buried in the backyard. That's the goal, right? You never want to leave. Um, and so we were talking about some of those issues, about home care, about how you can stay home as you get older, and as, as home gets more risky to be in. And we talked about home care providers and about programs and all the things, the wonderful things in Martha's Vineyard, which are terrific. And so afterwards, I was going table to table saying, so I hope you like the program. And this one, one woman said, it was terrible. I said, it was terrible? She said, yeah, this had nothing to do with what I wanted to hear about. I wanted to know how to deal with my home to make it safer for me as I got older, to deal with those kinds of issues. So I don't remember this lady's name, but if you see me, right, this one's for you. This one actually in the next show are to talk about these issues because they are at least as important as all of the home care and other issues in terms of people's goal of staying home until they die and being buried in the backyard. So, I, I, I met um, Ca uh, Carol DiRienzo. Is it, is it DiRienzo or DiRienzo? DiRienzo. DiRienzo, uh, through Brenda, uh, because Carol's background is she is a, an RN who has done a lot of geriatric care work and had the good fortune to marry a, a carpenter who does a lot of um, that kind of work. And so they have found themselves, as you often do, you know, kind of talking about issues that are kind of related to the both of them, which caused her to kind of focus on this issue. So I met her and, t and talked to her about what they do and was so fascinated by it, I said, well, this is really the Martha's Vineyard program. So we're going to talk today about, and about all, and by the way, I've tried, I wanted to do this here in Oak Bluffs uh, because these are the, these, this is where I do the summer programs, and this is really about a lot of folks also who have cottages here whose home, some lady was, just, lady was just talking to me. She said, you know, in New York, where I live, we've got all the bells and whistles, you know, but you come to Oak Bluffs, it's not the same, right? So um, to talk about how you can make this place, whether it is your full-time home or your summer home, uh, or adapt it so that it stays safe and stays the place that you want to come, whether you end up having physical issues now or later, or whether you, have, whether you get some milder forms of dementia so that you really have the ability to stay home as long as there's somebody there with you and as long as it's safe. So with that, I just want to introduce Carol. You're going to hear very little from me today because I want to hear from her. 
And then I'm going to just make some comments about some of the issues that may, that some of the, the permitting issues that you may need to deal with if you're kind of doing any of this stuff. So. Thank you, Arthur. And thank you all for having me here today, especially to Arthur for that. My name is Carol DiRienzo, and I am a nurse carpenter. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I've been a nurse for 33 years. Um, is that I know I look older. Is that, is that an NC? <laughs> or an RN? It's an NC. Yeah, I'm an RN. Yeah, we're an NC. <laughs> now I'm an NC. That's a good one. Um, and 10 years ago, I had an abrupt change in my life. I had to have back surgery. And being the good nurse that I was, I did all of the education needed about the surgery, the doctor, the hospital, the whole nine yards. Went in, and thankfully, it was a success, and I can still walk today. Um, one thing I never thought about was going back home. Never thought about until I pulled in my driveway and said, there's 13 stairs to get in. I'm only allowed to do stairs for once a day. How am I going to do that? And once I get in, it's 13 stairs to the bedrooms, 13 stairs to the basement. Yeah. And so I personally found how difficult it was for the home that I loved no longer really loved me. So I started doing education and assessments on people who wanted to stay home. Who remembers buying the house home that you have now? How do you remember buying your home that you have now? Do you remember looking at it and saying, "Oh, we could put a garden here. Oh, yeah. We could put, we could paint this room," and and you made it comfortable for you, like a good pair of jeans. You buy a new pair of jeans, and it takes a couple of washings till they fit you forever. Unfortunately, what happens along the way is the home, and my jeans got too tight, and my home got too difficult. And so we tried very hard to adapt my home temporarily to suit my needs. I'm vertically challenged. I used to jump on my counters to reach my upper cabinets. Well, I got up and I said, how am I getting down? <laughs> what can I do? What is going on? So we, the new terminology out now is called aging in place. And that's basically what we're doing. Aging in place, making your home to enable you to stay there safer, safer and more comfortably for as long as possible. How do you do it? Practical modifications and additions. You're not going to go in and blow out the whole home and make, it, and make it all new for you. No, you're going to do small little changes along the way that make it comfortable, user-friendly, and safer. So what are some of the tools we use to do that? Well, the first tool is called universal design. The second tool is a good carpenter, but that's another story. Universal design is the concept of designing all product and the built environment to be beautiful and usable by the greatest number of people possible. And in your packet, you'll see there's seven principles of universal design. We're going to go through them very quickly. But how much it has changed our world unknowingly. One of the first principles of universal design is equitable use. The design or the environment should be able to be used by everybody. So if you ever go to some stores now, like a Walmart, if you go off vineyard, they have those automatic doors. You walk in, they open for you. Mm -hmm. Open says me. Whether you're three years old, 103 years old, whether you're in a scooter or a wheelchair, or you have a cart in front of you, those doors open. Everybody can use it. Second one is flexibility in use. Who remembers having left-handed scissors and right-handed scissors? As a child, we had two baskets, and I had to try to figure out which scissor was good for me. Nowadays, my grandchildren pick up one pair of scissors, and whether they're left-handed or right-handed, they can cut. Simple and intuitive. Garage door openers are a great example of something that's simple and intuitive. You push a button, garage goes up. You push a button, garage goes down. Perceptible information. You should be able to understand what is being shown to you, whether you have um, no sight or limited sight, or whether you have no hearing or limited hearing. So it's a variety of different ways in order to disseminate information. Tolerance for error. I don't know about any of you, but when I learned how to sew, I sewed my finger more than once. <laughs> Nowadays, they have a nice little safety feature on here, so you can't do that and it helps prevent you from getting hurt. 
you'd be surprised what the kids in the school can do. I'm sure. Oh, really? You sound like you speak from experience. Right. Low physical effort. This is my most favorite part of universal design. Lever handles are a godsend. Do you ever walk into your home with packages and you're like, okay, how am I going to turn that knob? So you use your elbow, I've used my foot, I've used other parts of my body, and then door opens. And now something new that's come out is called touch technology. We have it on our cell phones, they have it in on faucets. All you have to do is touch a faucet, water comes on, and touch a faucet and water comes off. Now, my friend has cats who have learned to turn it on, but have not learned how to turn it off. So there come some issues with it sometimes. And the last part of universal design is appropriate size and space for use and approach. So make sure you have wide doorways. Make sure you're able to reach certain things. So what are the obstacles that you face to aging in place? Can you get in your home? That was me when I come home from the hospital. I'm like, oh my. Can you get to a bathroom and use a bathroom? You might be able to get there, but bathroom doors are 24, 26 inches wide. How are you going to get an assisted device through there? Or as I become a little larger, how am I going to get through there? Can you get to your bedroom? And then when you get there, can you get in? Can you get to your bed? And your kitchen. We all have to eat. It's very hard to function sometimes in a kitchen um, that doesn't allow you to, like for me, to reach my upper cabinets. And I can no longer climb. So let's start with entries and exit ways. Some of the minor changes you can do when you look at your home. Can you just change the location of the entrance door? If your front door has 13 stairs, maybe your side door only has three. It might be more easier for you to adapt your side door than your front door. Can you re-landscape the area? Maybe you only have a couple of stairs where you're able to take that landscaping and bring it right up to your door. And lighting. Sometimes if you're fortunate enough to live in a ranch, mutrous might need better lighting to get into your door and safely. Some other additional minor changes. Portable ramps. Sometimes you just have a threshold and you just need a little help getting up that threshold. And these are available. They run anywhere between $100 and $500 that you could put in your home. And depending on the size of your step, depends on the slope, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So those are minor changes you can do. What happens if you have a little bit more difficult time? Major changes, something that you're gonna actually spend some money on to accomplish. Ramps. Ramps are a wonderful way to get into your home. But you have to have enough space. A ramp slope is a one in 12, so for every inch you go up, you go out 12 inches. So if you're only going up one step, you can use a portable ramps that are just 12 inches long or two steps or two inches or 24 inches long. But at a certain point in time, four or five, six steps, you're gonna have to put in a ramp of some sort. And these are two different types of ramps. They come in all different varieties. This one is a stationary ramp. It's a fix to your home. Once it's up, it's usually not coming down unless you're gonna hire somebody to take it down. This is a portable one. It's not exactly fixed to your home, but it's butt up against your, uh, your landing. It's made of aluminum. It's made so that it can be dismantled when you are no longer in need of it. And you can sometimes either sell it back to the manufacturer or you can sell it online on Craigslist or something. But they're a wonderful addition. And you can see this person had five steps to go up. So it had to be able to go out, down, and around to accomplish the slope correctly. And your building inspector will be able to help you with that going on. 